Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. I am really excited because we are going to be making a super cute hammock that is a rectangle, a rectangular cube hammock. Wow, that was hard to say, huh? Um, it's going to have a hole in the front and a hole in the top. This hammock is actually pretty large. It's made in ferret size, so it looks like this. Um, it's also got a hole in the top. It's a part of a custom order. Um, she also got this is the cone although the tutorial that i did is a cone hammock this is without the hammock strap basically just leave the strap off i'll put a link to that video in the description so i do recommend though if you guys make any of these items that you use fleece and cotton and not all fleece these are all made in all fleece and the problem with using all fleece is that if you have a regular sewing machine it may be very difficult to get all of this fabric and the stabilizer, whether you're using Pellon or whether you're using U-Haul um, or batting, all of that thickness is going to be really hard to go through a regular machine. I could have never sewn these in all fleece on my Bernina or on my Singer. Um, I just don't feel like it would have gone through, especially when you get around to the corners and you start attaching the whole thing together. So just keep that in mind. I will also be putting links in the description to any alternatives to Pellon, because you guys know I'm a Pellon junkie and that I absolutely love Pellon. It's really great for stabilizing and it's fusible fleece, so it's, it's not anything crazy or dangerous. But what I can say is if you don't want to use that because it's expensive or hard to find, I will put alternatives to fusible fleece in the description so that you guys have some alternatives. Without further ado, I'm going to jump into the video and let's just do it. Okay, so I wanna just start this by saying that a list of all of the materials that I used will be in the description along with the sizes. The size of this is going to be for ferrets, so I will also put a size in here that you could probably do if you had two rats. If you had more than that, you may wanna make it a little bigger. This is completely adjustable to whatever size you would like to make it. Um, I wouldn't go too small, I wouldn't go too, too big. Um, you want something that's gonna be able to hold its shape, fit in your cage nicely, and that you can sew without a whole lot of struggle. This is going to be a rectangle, so you're going to want to have four pieces, four, four rectangles that are the same size. You're going to need a front and a back piece, so I have four pieces cut out, a front and four pieces of a back. Mine are measuring 17 long by 13 wide. And then I have the two sides, so I have a side here and a side here, um, outside fabric and an inside fabric. These are 13 by 13. When this is done, it's going to be... Um, 16 by 12 so that's gonna be the shape of the rectangle I wanted to add an extra inch to give myself a half inch seam allowance on all four sides in addition I cut out fusible Pellon this is Thermalin plus it's Pellon 971 I'll put a link in the description it's actually a little thicker than regular fusible fleece and it does a great job at holding shape basically I cut a piece of the Pellon for each piece so there are eight pieces of Pellon for this and there are um, four for my size. I cut this actually an inch smaller. So this is actually cut the exact same size of the rectangle once it's all finished. So these are cut 16 by 12 and then 12 by 12. Um, because you want your pellon to be a little bit smaller. Or even if you're using like batting or anything like that, you don't want it to be the exact size of your shapes before you cut them at, before you sew them because it'll be too hard to stitch. You're also going to want to use have strapping. You could use fleece straps if you have a pet that chews. So just be cautious and know your pets when you're deciding on how you're going to hang things and do what's best for your pet. All pets are not created equal. Some animals do chew and some don't. With that so. being said, you also need the basics, some pins or clips, uh, something to write with, a ruler, a sewing machine, and a pair of scissors. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to iron the Pellon onto the back of each of these pieces of fabric. I'm not going to record that because I have done this in the past at one videos. Also, it's very time consuming and I doubt you want to watch me iron for 20 minutes. So, but I'm going to give this recommendation. First, directions will come with your Pellon. Secondly, um, when I iron fleece and Pellon, you have to be really careful not to burn your fleece. I recommend strongly that you do not put an iron directly on your fleece ever. 
Um, I put a towel between the fleece and the pelon. I also use steam and I only hold the iron down for five to eight seconds and then I lift up and then I move to the next spot. You're not supposed to slide your iron when you're using, when you're ironing on this type of pelon. So I wanna talk briefly about how you would apply um, your stabilizer, whether that is you, if you're not using pelon. So if you decided to use cotton batting or U-Haul, what you would wanna do to prep your fabric instead of ironing on pelon, you would wanna get your U-Haul or your cotton batting and you would wanna put it on very similar to this. You would wanna you know, lay it on top of here and then you would wanna kinda of maybe even bring it a little bit closer to your ends and you're gonna put a light top stitch. You're gonna do this to each piece independently. Don't put them together to do this. You don't wanna stitch your two any of your pieces together at this point unless you're putting your holes in it for your circles, um, which we'll get to in a second. So you would wanna take each piece that has U-Haul or batting, you would wanna put that, lay it down, pin it in place, and then you would wanna stitch as close to the edge as you possibly can just to make sure that that batting or U-Haul doesn't move around once your project is done. And you would have to do that to every single piece that had batting or U-Haul, even if you didn't stitch all the way around and you just put periodic stitches, you know, every, I don't know, four inches you put a row of stitches, however you wanted to do it, you would have to make sure that that wasn't moving around if you opted to not use Pellon. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to draw circles for my openings. Um, there's going to, like, so I already did this one and I stitched it, but what you want is you wanna take two of your bigger, your bigger pieces, so your longer pieces, not your ends, um, and you're gonna put them right sides together. You don't have to do two pieces. You can have one opening, you can have three openings, you could have up to four, really. It's completely up to you how many openings. I'm gonna have two, one on the front and one on the top. So I took two of my rectangles that measure um, 17 by 13 and I, I um, put them right sides together and clipped them in place. Then I got a circle. You can use whatever size circle you want. You could do a square. Again, completely up to you. I'm gonna be doing them kind of off centered. So if you see this one is on over here, um, this one's on, kind of off to the side. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And I've already actually traced the circle. So basically I just sat this down, made sure that there was enough, that wasn't real close to the edge. And, um, and not real close to this edge. You wanna give yourself a couple inches here, trace your circle, and then go over to your sewing machine and stitch all the way around. Okay, so once you have stitched all the way around your circle, you can unclip, um, unclip these. And you guys, if you've done um, hidey hole hammocks or anything, you probably know how to do this next step. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this circle out. Make sure not to cut your stitch lines. And you want to get as close to the stitch lines as you can. Just don't cut your stitch line. Um, and once you've done that, you'll have a hole. Now you're going to take and um, take your one of your pieces, whichever one, and you're going to push it through the hole. So now you should have both of your batting or pelon or U-Haul facing each other. So you should be looking at the right side of your, of your outer piece and the right side of your inner piece. And they should look just like this. And then what you're going to want to do, what I do, is I do a top stitch around this. Now, some people have a hard time top stitching this circle, um, but I just put my presser foot down. I, I'm able to move my needle over, so I move my needle over, and I stitch it in place. I clip this also because it helps hold it exactly where I want it. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm going to move my needle um, to the right as far as it'll go. And then when I put it down, I just put the presser foot right along the edge right here. And my needle's over pretty far. And um, I use my Bernina for this. I do not use my industrial machine because I'm able to move my needle and I cannot move the needle on my industrial. And then if you go real slow, you can go around this. Um, it's, it's gonna be thick. So now I have two pieces that have a hole. I'm going to pick one of these that's going to be the front, and I'm going to pull it aside. This is actually going to be the hole that's on the top. So I'm going to set this aside for now because what we're going to do is we're going to connect all the side pieces together. So I don't need this piece right now. We're going to put the top and bottom on last. So I should be looking at the right side of my fabric should be facing me, and the right side of the inside should be facing the table. You're going to grab your side piece you're gonna make sure that you're looking at the right side of the fabric is facing out. So you're gonna put them together, wrong sides together, right side of the fabric facing out, right side of the inside fabric facing out. And then you are going to take this and you're going to lay it on top of 
the front side of your the front rectangle you're going to line the ends up together and you don't have to clip these in place you can clip them in place and I'm going to clip these just so I can show you guys what, what we're doing and give you a really clear visual. So I have done that. I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch all the way down. I'm going to back stitch at each end. I should have the outside of my basket facing each other. When I'm done stitching, I'm going to open it up and it's going to look like this. Okay, so I stitched that first side on. It looks like this. You can zigzag stitch. I use a straight stitch, but I just went over it twice. Um, and it's probably neurotic, but I did. I'm going to now take my other side piece. I'm going to put it um, with the outside fabric facing me. The wrong sides are together. I'm going to match up my outer fabrics right sides together. I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did over there. So we're going to stitch down here and then back stitch at each end. All right, so now that you've sewn on your other side, you should have something that looks like this. Now you want to attach your back rectangle. So again, do the same thing. Right sides facing out. Match it up with the side. Pin it in place and stitch it. Stitch it. Back stitch at each end. Okay, so you should now have all of your sides connected. It's going to be pretty long if you did it for like a ferret. You're going to want to make sure, I would check all your seams, make sure that you caught all of the layers, that there's no openings here, any kind of funky, like where you can see because you didn't stitch all four pieces. Um, you can flip it over to the back and you can trim off any excess fabric. Try not to trim so close that you accidentally cut your stitches. That will be bad. <laughs> um, you know, you just want to get it as neat as possible and just trim it up where you can. So once you've cleaned it all up, which I'm going to do here in a second, but... You're going to want to take and you're going to connect your sides. So then you will just take this side, this end piece, connect it to the other end. So you're going to stitch straight down the side just like you had been doing. So you are going to connect all your sides together to create a rectangle. Okay, so once you've sewn the sides, you should have something that looks like this. It's a rectangle. Um, and it should just be a rectangle. <laughs> and we're going to now attach the bottom. Okay, so you want to get your bottom rectangle, the one without the hole. I'm going to put the right sides facing up. So I'm going to be looking at the outside fabric. I'm going to have the right side of the inside fabric facing down. I'm going to take my rectangle. We're going to put this together kind of like we do with a cuddle cup. I'm matching the right sides together. I'm in the corner. I'm just putting that corner right against that corner there and I am going to clip it so that I have all four layers. And then I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna line up the long ends, or what, it doesn't really necessarily matter what side, but basically you're matching these up. And you're gonna just clip or pin this all the way around. Okay, so now that you have Clipped your bottom in place. It should look like this. You're going to want to go over to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch the bottom. Now I would stitch about a half an inch in. You want to make sure, I know I keep saying this, that you're grabbing all four layers and you're going to stitch all the way around until this, your sides are completely attached to your bottom. Okay, so now that you've stitched this, what you want to do is I would turn it so that you could see the outside. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you caught all of your pieces. And the best way to do that is to just check it. Um, you'll know if you didn't because you'll be able to see, they, like your seams will not look, they won't look good. You'll see splits in your seams. So go around and check all your seams. Make sure you caught all the pieces. There's nothing funky. You can't see the black. You can't see any of the... Um, Pellon or whatever you're using as a stabilizer, it, it's all nice and stitched well. So now you should have um, your rectangle basically. We just got to put our top and our straps on and then we're done. So we're going to flip this back so that the um, inside is, is facing out. Okay. So now I have this. I'm going to put my straps on or at least I'm going to put them where I want them. I'm going to be putting straps here on each of the sides. Um, one on each kind of corner about a, about an inch in maybe half an, about an inch in because you're going to stitch and 
I'm going to fold my strapping in half, or if you're using fleece straps, you want to fold it in half. Um, these are nine inches long. I'm going to sew about an, a half an inch or an inch, so they'll be about, when it's all said and done, they'll hang, it'll hang about five inches or so from the top of the cage. So I'm just going to attach these evenly across from each other. I'm going to actually, you want the hoop to face inside. All right, so I got my straps. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to head over to my sewing machine. I'm just going to stitch this in place. I'm just going to put a stitch across the top of each of these to hold them in place before I add my top on so they don't move around during this last process. We're basically going to do the top the same way, except I'm going to make this a little easier on myself now that it's set up like this. I probably don't have to turn it upside down and match the ends up just as crazily. You could do it a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my hole wherever I want it to be. I want the right sides facing down. You can drop it, your top. Now remember, this piece for me is connected, so I don't have to worry too much about it coming apart because it is kind of already connected. So I'm just going to take the end and I'm going to match it up to the end. We're basically doing the same thing. You can tip it over and do it just like you did when we just did those other sides, or you could just match it up this way. You're going to be doing the exact same thing. So you're going to match up all the edges and then you're going to stitch all the way around. All right, so now you're gonna do just what you did with the bottom. You're gonna stitch this top on, making sure that you get all four sides. Um, and it's really important that you do that because you'll have to turn it completely um, right side out to make sure that you got all four sides and keep turning it back in and back out if you didn't. So I would come in the same way and just make sure that you're, you got all four sides when you do this. And go over your straps, where your straps are. I would back stitch over that even though you already stitched it in place. It never hurts to reinforce your straps, especially if your babies are going to be in there hanging from your cube hammock. All right, my friends, that is it. So what you want to do now is trim off any excess. Again, don't um, make sure not to cut your stitch lines or any of that. Get it nice and trimmed up. You're going to flip it right side out. So you're going to check and make sure you caught all four layers. If you didn't, flip it right side, flip, flip it back inside out and just stitch where you missed the layers. You, that's a really easy fix. You just have to restitch and make sure that you grab all the pieces. It can be a pain. The first time I ever made a, few, a couple of these, like many years ago, but um, I would always miss layers. It's just so easy to do when you're new at it because it's, it's a lot of fabric and it's real thick. All right, you guys, moment of truth. So they get all these little dusties and any kind of threads off. And then we're going to just reach in any of the holes and pull it right side out. Okay, you guys, this is it. It's got a hole in the top, a hole on the side, hangs here. It's amazing. It's adorable. It's huge. I absolutely love it. And now I want to make one for my own ferrets.